Hello, thank you very much for joining us. This is Platform. I'm Ruth Aguela. Today we look at sports. Quite interesting, right? Horse racing, actually, which is an equestrian performance sport involving two or more horses ridden by jockey over a set of distance. A very lovable sport and can be fun. That is for those who have what it takes to ride one. The sport has been enjoyed by horse lovers for centuries and beyond leisure and more importantly, it is a global multi-billion dollar industry. But unfortunately, horse racing is not quite, um, not yet quite a popular sport in Nigeria, but very active in northern parts of the country. All over the north, festivals, celebratory events and other festive occasions often include a commemorative horse racing event. Elites, royalties would often list horse racing as part of their hobbies and a very integral part of the culture for royalties in the north. Talking about the parade of beautifully adorned horses we often see during Durban festivals. Always a beautiful sight to behold. But to push it beyond just leisure and tradition, the Northern States Turf Club Authority was created in 1960 by the late Saudan Sokoto and Premier of Northern Nigeria. But with a view of promoting the practice of the disciplines from leisure, competitive activities to high-level national sport, the Turf Club Federation of Nigeria was created to make the sport of horse racing a national sport and away from what was a sectional recognized event. In 2022, the Turf Club Federation was na was, um, of Nigeria was transformed to become the Horse Racing Federation of Nigeria. Although there are intricacies to promoting horse racing, which involves getting standards, setting standards right, ensuring the safety of the horses, devoid of doping, ensure that the well-being of the jockeys and provide an enabling sporting environment for the activity to thrive. Plus, getting the right minds invest in the business of horse racing because it is big business. Today on Platform, we are discussing revolutionizing horse racing in Nigeria. And we have a guest who is well grounded in the business of horse racing. They call him the Serikindo Akinupe. He is the founder of Modern Horse Race in Nigeria, also National Coordinator, Horse Racing Federation of Nigeria, Abu Bakr Mustafa. Thank you very much for joining us on platform. Thank you very much, Ruth. It's good to be here with you. Same here. It's a pleasure. Yeah. And just before we introduce our panelists, let's take you through a bit of his profile. Mustafa Abu Bakr Bidda, Serikin Dawai Kendube Nupe, a native of um, Bida, Niger State. He obtained his OND in accounting in 1998 from Federal Polytechnic Bidda, then um, Kaduna Polytechnic, where he completed his HND program in accounting. Afterwards, he had his PGD program with the College of Accountancy, JOS, now Inan University. That was in 2006. He was inducted into the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, Inan member, in April 2008 and later obtained additional educational qualification of MBA in finance from um, Akin, Lad Ladoke Akintola University in 2015. He has worked in federal civil service and has held several responsibilities, both professional and political. He is a fellow of the various professional bodies, fellow Chartered Institute of Treasury Management, fellow certified national accountant, member Association of National Accountants of Nigeria Management, and all the achievements he has recorded for himself. Well, they call him the Hossman, and we'll get to find out more in that direction. Thank you once again for joining us on Platform. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, so our panelist today is the former chairman, Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, FCT chapter, and also an assistant director of news with the Nigerian Television Authority, Kayode Adeni. Thank you so much for joining us. It's nice to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Your it's first time on here. platform. Exactly. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited too. <laughs> okay. Now that we are talking sports. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sports is actually a big business. Um, Mr. 
Abubakar, you yes. know, this is, and when we're talking horse, you know, anybody that just hear horse racing, they just said it's for the elites, yeah. you know, it's for the royalties. And for me, I've always admired it from a distance, yeah. you know, and sport racing is something, is a sport that has evolved over time yeah. in Nigeria. And today we're looking at revolutionizing um, horse racing in Nigeria. And if you want to look back over the years, how Nigeria has fared in that regard, what will be the picture like for you? Well, um, Alhamdulillah, thank you for having me here. Um, uh, horse racing activities in Nigeria, you know, has over the years, you know, been a royal and uh, northern activity. But, uh, you know, with the formation of the Horse Racing Federation, you know, we have taken it to a level, you know, of, you know, across all the ge geopolitical zones. And then we have tried to improve, you know, the sports you know, to meet with the global best practices, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the anti-doping. Yes. You know, over the years, uh, the industry has been, uh, 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 you know, a lot of doping activities, you know, were going on in the industry. You know, uh, so many horses were under the influence of drugs. So we have successfully eliminated that, you know, from uh, one of our major uh, uh, derby in Sokoto and then subsequently it has become the order of the day and then uh, you find out now uh, horse racing activities you know have joined the league of other sports you know in the country uh, the football and then basketball and then we are trying to make it better by the day Okay, um, yes. I know Mr. Coyote wants to come in, but just to follow up to that, yes. um, you compared horse racing to football. Now, yes. there's a very big margin, yes. you know, to that. Yes. And there are a lot of issues around that, yes. why we haven't gotten to where we ought to be. Yeah. We, if we want to put horse racing and football or other sporting activities that are yeah. very active in yeah. Nigeria, it, it's, it's, it's something, the, the difference, the margin is very huge. Mr. Kadi, you agree with me? I, I, I do agree with you. Uh, but one thing I just quickly want to ask from what you just told yeah. us yeah. is, now, this oxidation has been a long time, yeah. date back to 1904, yeah, yeah, when the colonialists yeah, yeah. started this game. And from there, we talk about have thought that uh, the first game that came to this country, the colonial brought, yes. because the, 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 the colonialists yeah. love to ride uh, us. It was and also uh, a means and, of transportation. And, 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 and so when, when they left Nigeria, yeah. before they even left Nigeria, the, yeah. the military have already taken over yeah. about, uh, about this issue. But Today, um, the, 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 the sports is still struggle yeah. to survive. Now yeah. you said, come, let's compare with uh, football, with basketball, mm -hmm. with football. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a quite quite what we can talk about. But before we go to that, let, let's leave the comparison alone now. Yes. Let us talk about this, uh, this, uh, the, the, the sports. Yes. You know, there's no way you can do without major infrastructure, yes. which today you agree with me that it's not a free no can corner of this country. Yeah. Have. Let us ask your federation, yeah. what are you doing in that area first? Uh, well, I think I will answer the questions, you know, okay. jointly. Okay. You know, I will start with uh, Ruth. You know, uh, you are talking about comparison of football, you know, and uh, horse racing. Uh, we are close because uh, a one million mile journey starts with a step. Yes. Okay. We had actually taken that step. Okay. And then I come back to you regarding the infrastructure. Of course, we might not have an equal infrastructure of, you know, football in Nigeria, but we quite have, you know, a couple of racetracks in Nigeria. We have a very modern one in the ultra modern stadium in Kaduna. Yeah. There's a standard, you know, racetrack there which can meet with a world standard. Same you find in Dubai and anywhere in the world. And then we also have a standard track in, in Bida, Niger State, you know, where I come from. And then a lot of, you know, northern states, you have uh, a standard track for, for horse racing, which is the basic amenity, you know, for horse racing. Once you have the track, the jockeys are always available. We have the horses. We are always bringing in the horses. And we are also, you know, uh, breeding new horses in Nigeria with uh, equal strength of international horses. In fact, that is the most interesting aspect, hmm. you know, of, uh, you know, what we are trying to achieve here. You know, we have, uh, over the years, you know, um, 
in Nigeria, you know, we have been racing with some category of horses, you know, that are foreign and alien, you know, to Nigeria. Uh, most times, you know, we have uh, the Sudan horses, where we have to go to Sudan to import them. That is also, you know, taking out foreign exchange, you know, from Nigeria to Sudan. And then we also have uh, the Talo, Talo breed. Those ones come from Chad. You know, we have to spend money to get them from, from Chad. And then we also have the, the Toro Brats. Toro Brats are the English horses. You find them in Argentina and America. Actually, those are the kind of horses that are mostly used, you know, for polo playing. Okay. Uh, you can imagine, you know, one horse will cost about uh, 30 million naira. Huh. And then uh, you see by every statistics, you know, we are aware, you know, we bring in about a thousand of those horses mm. every year, basically for the consumption of the in industry of, you know, polo and horse racing. And then you can imagine the quantum of yeah. 30 by that number mm -hmm. of millions, you know, you spend bringing, you know, such kind of, you know, horses to the country to achieve, you know, uh, standard horse racing and, and polo. Uh, Alhamdulillah, at this point, uh, what we have also tried to do as part of our transformation was to create uh, a category of horse that we call the Niger breed. Okay. Yes, these Niger breeds are horses that are born and bred in Nigeria. And then we have also equally achieved uh, to have those horses, you know, in an equal strength with the thoroughbred. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you here is over the years, very soon in about four or five years, now Nigerians will not go to import horses from Argentina and anywhere in the world. So this is uh, an all-encompassing approach, mm -hmm. you know, to ensure that, you know, the industry is improved and, you know, uh, fully guided, you know, for general development of horse racing activity. In Nigeria. Okay, go what, ahead, Mr. Kaya. Quite, 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 quite interesting because yeah. um, you know, there's no, sports cannot develop without yeah. basic infrastructure. Yeah, sure. I, I know you yeah, agree with sure, me. Sure. Uh, yeah, you have already mentioned few places yeah. where it be there in Kaduna, yeah. where you can find a Ka ferry track. Kano, I mean, Kano where yeah. you can find a ferry track yeah. for us. Listen, yeah. I, I, I also remember yes. it used, there's, there used to be one in a battle. Yeah. It passed yeah. before the place was demolished and then yes. another building yeah. uh, was uh, constructed. Yes. But we still need to look at this because if your association yes. are trying to develop this, yes. Yes. Uh, you also need to tell us yes. what effort yes. is the action making yes. in making sure that this infrastructure we are talking about yes. can just be found yes. in every nook and corner of this country because to, to grow the, the sports, yes. people must have access yes. to this infrastructure yes. we are talking about yes. that's the only way Certainly. for now I, I don't want to talk about yes. the accessibility of yes. in, in nigeria to that game but yes. let's talk i want you to talk as far as you the, uh, your association is doing yes. concerning this infrastructure what effort are you making particular to make sure that this infrastructure are all located in every corner of this country um well uh, going back from the beginning you know the horse racing has only been a northern activity yes. then with the formation of the federation we're actually trying to ensure that you know we have found ourselves at least in each of the geopolitical zone now in the west where you're talking about ibadan the lagos track the lagos racing track is still very yeah. available yeah. Yeah. yeah and then hopefully you know in this year 2023 uh, we are hoping to have one race in each of the geopolitical zones, starting with Lagos in the west, as okay. you mentioned. Okay. And then we have Potakot, you know, in the, the other region of the country. And then uh, I, I, I don't have the statistic here, but I know this is uh, part of the accessibility that we are working on to ensure that, you know, uh, there is at least one standard racing facility in each of the political zones of the country.
<laughs> okay, and you know, we also have the Abuja Horse and um, Country Club. Yes. Uh -huh, with the Lagos and yeah. Potakot Saddle yeah. Club. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I know that the Horse Racing Federation um, instituted the Nigerian Horse Racing Integrity and Safety, yeah. um, you know, authority to the racing circuits to ensure there is, you know, safe and fairness as regards the horses and of yeah. course the jockeys. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, regarding the standards and it has to do with the safety of the horses and the jockeys. Uh, one of the major things that we have actually achieved uh, has to do uh, going back to the issue of the doping. Hmm. Now, uh, before the advent of the Horse Racing Federation of Nigeria, when every other activity of the, of the horse racing in Nigeria used to be under the Northern Turf Club, you know, doping was the order of the day. Hmm. So if you want to talk about safety, uh, if the horses are racing in their own strength, now the horse and the jockey are almost 100% safe. And then uh, we have also, you know, uh, made some other efforts in the other direction where now you see uh, in every race, you know, we have drones, you know, flying all over to see where there are foul plays. You know, in the foul play, that's where the safety of the horses and the jockeys are also, you know, badly affected. Yes. And then we have also made it a standard uh, now you see every of our race, uh, you will see that uh, there's an ambulance okay. behind the horses okay. to take care of any emergency. So if there's an emergency, a crash of a horse or a crash of a rider, uh, within a second he's been picked by the ambulance and then he's given first aid and then the next minute he found himself in the hospital. Well, how, so is is the, how is the Federation ensuring that um, beyond the time for the race, um, there is due regulation, there is due adherence, um, if we're looking at anti-doping e campaign exercise, because yeah. you can know it all during the, during the race time, yeah. um, before the race time, yeah. what goes on? How uh, do you put a check to all of that? Maybe I, I'll just put it uh, uh, the way the, uh, wa uh, the water. Yeah. Uh, or I also put it, yes. they call it out of competition testing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the <laughs> act of out of competition testing, you know, yeah. you don't need to, 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 to race. They just call you, yeah. call the junkies, call your horse. Yeah. You just do the, the kind of random testing. Yes. And uh, that result can be preserved for the next six or one, one year, yeah. according to the I IOC. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have that kind of a thing? It's only when there's a competition that you know, could be your, your, your horses, the, the players will come, let us do the, 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 the test. Or there's something that you do, even when there's no competition. Yeah, beyond that monitoring during the race, you know? Yeah, actually, in, in the racing activity, uh, or, but basically, I think even in all sporting activities, the doping only covers the period of the event. Okay. Usually, we, we have uh, a team of specialists. Uh, we take sample of horses randomly, you know, after a race. But basically, what we do is uh, we have like a winning number. For instance, there will be 20 horses, you know, racing. But then the prizes are only for number one to four. Okay. So what we do is we take the first eight for the testing. Okay. You know, after the first eight and the testing of the first eight, anyone that is found to be, you know, uh, enhanced by a drug is dropped to the next number. Okay. And then that is how we do it. And then uh, basically our testing, you know, for the drug use is just you know, within the DIB period or a DIB or a competition period. Okay, but Go listen, ahead. You know, uh, let's talk well about this doping of a thing. Yes. Um, when a player, yeah. a junkie or the yeah. horse is found to have been drugged, yes. what punishment did such uh, people yes. get from your uh, federation? Yeah, you know, yesterday, uh, last year, sorry, last year was uh, the pioneer year you know, of this anti-doping activities in Nigeria, uh, we have found, uh, you know, a couple of culprits. And then for now, the stand the horse is banned for a year, okay. uh, along with the jockey. Hmm. Because, you know, there are some instances where the owner of the horse is not even aware, you know, that the horse is being doped. The doping happens sometime in between the jockey, you know, and the horse boy. 
so i mean having to have a punishment you know aligned to the owner of the horse has been very difficult for now okay. but then now the limitation is that the horse will be banned for one year along with the jockey okay. Okay. which is uh, which is a, a real uh, big punishment as far as horse racing is concerned because you know depending on the on the category of the horse but i can tell you if it is a toro bread you have a toro bread that you bought for 30 million for racing and it's being grounded for a year you cannot win any race and there will be like eight races or nine or ten races in a year wow. and then you are restricted from you know going for that competition you don't have any winning and then you know a horse is not like a car yes you have to feed it you have to maintain it the grooming is very <laughs> expensive yeah, the nice. and then <laughs> now now i tell you within that one year that you have that horse standing you could spend up to five to ten million oh, wow so it's a big punishment everybody is running away from it and, and then one thing okay. we have also achieved which will interest you very very much is that uh, before the advent of you know the anti-doping exercise you know uh, we have it on record that a lot of races that happen in nigeria in the last five years, you will see that you will find uh, two, three, four, or five number of star horses hmm. dying from, you know, the effect of oh, the drug, drug abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. But this has stopped since we have started. That is the landmark. Yeah. So we are not guessing. We are very sure of what we are doing. And then we know that we have had, you know, so much effect you know, on this anti-doping exercise, which, is, which has been acknowledged actually by uh, most of our partners. Because this racing activity in Nigeria doesn't have to do with Nigeria alone. Most times we race with the neighboring countries yeah. of Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, Chad and Cameroon. So uh, they have actually, you know, taken this idea home and then Nigeria has now become uh, a role model in horse racing activities just for this single activity that we have marked out. And then uh, we are now taking a lead in, in most of uh, the activities that are relating to horse racing in Nigeria. Okay. Due to the success of this anti-doping exercise, we were at the back. Hmm. Now we have come to the front. They listen to us for uh, every action to be taken as far as horse racing is concerned in Africa. But so what about that is compliance? A what about compliance, um, adherence to the rules um, that involves? If the anti-doping campaign must be sustained, yeah. are the jockeys or the horse owners, you know, complying to that? Or is it challenging when you have to, you know, make that happen? Well, as I said, you know, uh, the compliance means that the horses are now living well. They are not dying anymore. Okay. So that, is, that will give you the idea of the level of compliance. Okay, so yes. what about the periodic um, reviews of the racetrack? Yeah. Um, how, does that, um, how does that go? When we, if we have to ensure the safety of the horses and the riders yeah. on tracks, yeah, of how course. often is that done? Yeah, of course, you know, um, this year, this is the first year, you know, we have started racing with a calendar year, you know, we have eight races, we have had one in, um, in Burning Kebi, uh, we, we started with one in Bida in, in October, and then in November, we had one in Burning Kebi, uh, in January, which was last month, we, were ha we have one in Kaduna. Uh, going down to your question proper, um, this race tracks are always there and then they are being used locally at all time that is the the basic maintenance they're being used locally you know by horses within town the people within town they have their horses they use them to maintain the track and then we now do a general maintenance whenever you know a grand event is approaching uh, that's one of the major ways you know uh, we maintain our facilities
Okay. okay, okay. I, I, that's that's good. That's quite the uh, reflection on the, the feeling. Yes. But before I wanted to find out about the entries yes. for all these control you mentioned. Yes. What are the the, the requirement yes. to, uh, to 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 be part of that as 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 a junkie? But before I go through that, yes. I'm still interested in this doping that yeah. we are talking about. Yes. Uh, you know, in the IOC, and at least yeah. uh, there are certain kind of food yes. that you must eat. Yes. There are certain kind of food that you must not eat. Yes. The same goes with the drugs. Yes. Uh, in, in the case of us, these are the human beings who know what to take at what particular time. Yes. But these are the animal that doesn't know what to take except what you give them. Yes. Uh, who determines what you are giving? Is it, is it, is it the uh, anti-doping, the integrity anti-doping association? Yes. Or I can just get a horse, just go to the market and just buy food and start it giving uh, the, the horse. <laughs> Well, uh, a horse is not uh, human. You know, horses have uh, uh, a particular feet, which they are being fed, you know, like the hay. And then uh, there is dusa, we call it is a marsh, we call it dusa. And then uh, what we have done particularly, you know, to achieve uh, the anti-doping exercise is that over the years we have identified you know, particular drugs that are being used for doping. Mm. So uh, we got the scientists to isolate, you know, those drugs. Mm. So the horses are being tested for those drugs. Okay. Yeah, uh, because that, that these are the common drugs being used locally and internationally for doping to uh, I think what, what, what Kyle Day is first. trying to ask is mm. they abuse of these drugs yes. you know in terms of the medication yeah. um you can be the association can be everywhere uh, uh, yeah. you know you need that strict monitoring and compliance when they're being fed that's yeah. what he's trying to say usually so the, how is that done usually the doping doesn't mm -hmm. come from the feet okay doping is used is or is applied as an additional drug an enhancement drug, okay. not from the feet. Okay. Their feet are usually free of dope. Okay. Natural food of a horse is free of dope. Okay. So the dopings are particular, like Panadol, mm. you're asked to take two, you take 10. Like Tramadol, you're asked to take, you know, one spoon, you take 20 spoons, you know. And then once it gets to that level, because the drug is already isolated, once the horse is tested, it hmm. will uh, it will reflect. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's not talk about the entries for those conditions that you have just mentioned. Yes. Uh, uh, what do you need to have mm. to participate in this competition? Well, it's it's very simple and open. Uh, firstly, first you need to have a horse. Hmm. Uh, you buy your horse. Uh, you register with an association or mm. a particular company. Mm. We have a couple of associations. The Northern Tough Authority is still there. Uh, the Horse Racing Federation is also still there. Uh, and there's a company that we have formed, which I'm also a director. Uh, and that's the first, you know, private initiative, you know, to horse racing in Nigeria. Uh, you can also have yourself registered with your horse. And then the jokies are usually freelance. You okay. just pay them a certain percentage and then they ride your horse for you. And then uh, there is an entry requirement for each race, uh, which is about 10% of the, of the winning of the race. For instance, if uh, the first prize is going to be 1 million, and then you have your horse, you pay 10% of 1 million to register your horse and go for the competition. You know, I'm curious to know what it takes to be a jockey, but we'll find that out yes. um, after this break. So let's go on a break. We'll be back. Stay right. tuned. It seems that the Buhari-led administration has made remarkable progress. Like Lafia Transmission Station nearing completion. Africa does not need charity, but partnerships that will promote the adequate investment. With the cooperation of all. Sharing firsthand the experiences of reporters on the field as they bring to you weekly the beauty of Nigeria's diverse culture and the economic potentials therein. The Correspondents 
development through the eye of the grassroots, showing every Monday at 1.30 p.m. on the network service of the NTA, with a repeat broadcast on NTA News 24 and NTA International. Join us. Allow these children to grow. Yes. Many of them, you have somebody 14, 15, going to the university. Where are you going? Information technology is the future. Hello, a warm welcome to you. This is Platform. I'm Ruth Aguela. If you don't create that awareness and you don't bring the young minds to identify that there are benefits in astronomy. We have had experiences okay. through various leadership strata bringing us to where we can uh, platform engages guests on topical issues for national interest we have cases like that we all to protect children and also make parents realize that they have a primary responsibility join us every thursday at 2 p.m on the network surveys of the nta Thanks for staying tuned. The conversation is still on revolutionizing horse racing in Nigeria. Now, before we took that break, um, Mr. Abu Bakr, yes, we, you were telling us um, what it takes. Kayode yeah. asked you yeah. what it takes, you know, to be a part of it in terms of entry. Yeah. But I am curious, yeah. you said the, the jockeys are freelancers. Yes. So what does it take to be a jockey? Because imagine I want to change a profession yeah. and I want to be a jockey. What does it take? Yeah, Ruth, uh, congratulations. <laughs> You're already okay. a jockey. How? Oh, I yeah, know how because, to ride a horse. No, no, no. The only thing you need to <laughs> learn now is to learn to ride the horse. Okay. But you have, you have, uh, what is, how much do you weigh? Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah, <now>. because, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I, I'm sure you, you don't look okay, too you chubby. Need, you Most need of them, you see them, right? you see them small because they need to maintain a weight okay. of less than 50 kg. Okay. Yeah. Anything above 50 kg, you cannot no, be I'm a not joking. up to 50 kg. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still in line. You're in line. So okay. all you need to do is just to have the training of riding and then you're on to riding a horse. But most of them are traditionally trained, you know, over the years. Okay. You know, there are a couple of maneuvering tactics. Do that they you have need an association where they yes, just yes, okay? yes, 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 yes. And then they have, you know, the older jokies, you know, uh, they mentor and train the younger jokies. But the basic criteria, like, like I told you, is the weight. Anybody can ride a horse. I can also ride a horse. But then I cannot be a jockey because I weigh 100. Okay. Now, my weight of 100 will reduce the, the fastness okay. of the horse. Okay. So a jockey has to be 50 kg hmm. and you can't be less than 50 kg because if you are less than 50 kg and then the other jockeys are uh, 50 kg, that means your horse has the capacity to run faster. Hmm. So one thing about jockeys is that they live a life of restriction of food. So Mr. They Kyle, must they make they sure they I'm have a a weight. I, I, I'm, I'm also <laughs> wondering if I can also be a jockey. Oh. Uh, but I don't look at my weight. I I'm asking whether I'm about 50 or more, less than 50. Yes. But you see, in the, in the development of what you are doing, representing the the, yes. the, 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 the in Nigeria, yes. uh, how much are we doing about the grassroots development of this race? Because people look at it from the angle of Oh, they have big men, yeah. they, they have the royalty, yeah. they yes. have the money, they have the manpower. Yeah. But how do we develop this yes. among the people, in the people that are not as rich yeah. as those people that, are, that can avoid the 30 million that you are talking about? Yeah, you see, uh, everybody has his own aspect. Hmm. The owner of the horse is a rich man. <sighs> You know, and the owner of the horse will only have the capacity to buy the horse and p to provide maybe feeding and then where to keep the horse. You also need to employ a groomer. Yeah. You understand? Yes. You also have to employ a jockey. You have to get a horse boy. Now, these are the grassroots development. Okay. These are other people that are not rich. So the, the spot it's almost for everybody. Everybody has a place in the spot. And you just mentioned a value chain that I find quite interesting. Yes. If you're employing the groomer, yeah. the jockey, yeah. you know, and it, we know that horse racing is a multi 
billion dollar yeah. um, in industry yeah. globally. Yeah. If we want to change the face of horse racing in Nigeria, yeah. um, there's a lot of investments that yeah. should go, go in. You yeah. talked about the private company yeah. that that is just one. Yeah. And we're looking at an expansion where yeah. this value chain can also create employment for those in the grassroots who would love to participate in the sport. Yeah. I cannot afford a horse, yeah. but I want to be a jockey or I want to be a groomer. Yeah. Uh, where, how do we begin to bridge the gap in Nigeria yeah. to ensure more investment yeah. for return? Yeah. Uh, like I said, you know, in the course of this interview, uh, I mentioned to you that one of the key things we're doing, you know, is to uh, breed horses locally yes. that we call them Niger breed. Now, those Niger breed horses uh, will come, uh, you know, in uh, an equal strength, you know, with a thoroughbred. So you don't need to go and get the strength of a thoroughbred by having 30 million naira to go and buy a thoroughbred from Argentina or Kentucky in America. Now, with the horse being bred in Nigeria, I, I bet you it's going to, you know, uh, cost much, much lower. And then the issue of affordability of uh, a common man is, is now certain. Yeah, they are still talking about this issue of um, yes. bringing so much investment yes. on this. And yes. What I need to get back in return yes. if I'm to bring this. Uh, the, 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 the corporate war, yes. how interested are they yes. for this game? Um, uh, this is this is an international event, you know, in uh, in places like Dubai and uh, America and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, prizes for racing used to go as much as you know ten million dollars, you know, for a winning of a race. We are not there yet, but we are targeting to get to those level. And then I come to, you know, go down to the basics, you know, of we having to have, you know, our uh, homebred horses as Niger bred. Because now this will also afford us the opportunity, you know, to have winners in Nigeria. Hmm. We fly them to Dubai or, or, or Brazil okay. or Argentina or America, you know, to also compete, you know, in, in a race where uh, monies of $10 million can be won. And I'm sure they are also looking forward to that. It's just that, you know, without having uh, a strong bread from Nigeria, we have never made effort in that direction. But I tell you, in a couple of years to come, we will have uh, the horses in Nigeria that we are now breeding. They need some years to mature, maybe three, four years. Okay. So by the time they get to that stage, we will be proud, you know, to take them out to anywhere in the world and say this is a Nigerian horse made in Nigeria. Just like the way you have, you know, uh, uh, the flying eagles and, uh, you know, other national, you know, representatives. Because as it is now in terms of uh, uh, horses that are uh, born and bred in Nigeria, they're all, you know, local horses which are used for the doba. Their strength is like a quarter of, you know, a thorough bread. Hmm. And then you can now measure it, you know, with the speed. Now, if you, if you want to go by, you know, the horses that, you know, we have been breeding in Nigeria and you take it to uh, probably uh, uh, Dubai, you know, where they have the thorough breads, and then you have a race that is supposed to be completed in, in five minutes, you know, uh, this local horse uh, in Nigeria that we presently have, you know, before the starting of this breeding of hybrid horses, maybe when uh, the the thoroughbred, you know, of Saudi Arabia is finishing the race in fi five minutes, the Nigerian horse will come and do it in 10 minutes times two. Hmm. So okay. they are very poor. Now we have, uh, you know, uh, more stronger, you know, high-tech horses. And then how we achieve that is is by you know, it's by having to import, you know, those horses, you know, the mares and the stallions, 
the stallions are the male horses, the mares are the female, and then we had them crossed mm. in Nigeria, and then the, the horses are given back to in Nigeria here, and then we call them, you know, uh, Niger bread. And then uh, one other thing that will interest you, you know, that that has to do with a lot of improvement, you know, in this racing breeding that we are doing, is that these horses that are being bought for uh, 30 million, 25 million, you import them to the country to race with them or, or play polo with them, they will only last for one year hmm. and they will die. Wow. Because of the tropical difference. Okay. But then if they are being born here, they are born tropicalized. Mm -hmm. So we are achieving a lot okay, you know, so by this. Um, let's not forget your title, Sarikin yes. Dawaikin Lupi. Yes. That means the king of horses. Yes, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, it means the king of horses, okay. yes. And yeah. you are one man who loves to promote and preserve culture. Certainly. Um, you said something that if we want to preserve our culture, then we should create it. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. yeah. So how has your title been able to, you know, influence um, interest and business-wise yes. when it comes to horse racing in Nigeria? Because yes. a little bird, you know, whispered to me that yeah. you have about 260 horses, I hear. If I'm right. Uh, well, um, okay. uh, with the traditional uh, traditional title, you know, of Sarikin uh, Dawaikin Nupe, uh, you mentioned in the course of this interview that horses were part of uh, means of transportation. Yes. Yeah. What it means in those days, in the colonial days, for a chieftaincy title holder of Sarikin Dawaikin Nupe, uh, it means the Minister of Transportation. Hmm. So obviously, uh, for anybody coming of that title, you must have uh, a good number of horses because uh, it has to cater for the local daba. You know, I'm the chairman of the organizing committee for every daba in Nupi land, so uh, I require to have uh, a number of horses. You know, to be able to uh, maintain that because, you know, at any point, uh, the Nupi uh, tribe is reckoned, you mm. know, uh, in terms of Daba. And then when there is a Daba in northern Nigeria, Nupi used to be one of the first. So, uh, with the tip of a finger, you know, 100 horses can come out from my house. That is on that aspect. Hmm. And then on the racing aspect, uh, obviously I have uh, the highest number of racing horses in Nigeria. And then like I tell you, the horses are in different categories. You know, we have the thoroughbred, uh, the Sudan horses that come from Sudan, the Talo horses that come from Chad. We have a particular, you know, Arewa that comes from Niger, and then we have Arewa that comes from Nigeria. So in each of these, you know, categories, I I, I maintain a fleet. <laughs> <laughs> so know, how has that attracted fleet, business? You a know? fleet of about uh, five to six. For Nigeria? Yeah, how and then uh, okay. uh, also because of the breeding aspect, you know, that, that we are talking about, you require to have, you know, plenty of mares yes. to reproduce these horses within time. So we have about 50 mares that we're using in production of horses. And you know, the gestation period, you know, of a horse is al almost like that of a human being. I think it's about 10 months. So if you have to have the horses going round, the yeah. production going round very fast, you need to have substantial number of mares that can reproduce. So how has this, you know, influenced interest and business, you know, for Nigeria to make this um, sporting activity, talking about horse racing, thrive for the country? Uh, a lot. Vis-a-vis -vis your, yeah. well, your title, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, a lot. One of the very fundamental things, you know, that we could talk about, you know, in this direction is that... Um, uh, we have come to be a force to reckon with in the industry. And then, as I told you some years back, we are far behind, now we are leading. So this is 
This is enough to tell you that it's coming with a lot of development and respect, okay. you know, for the country. Uh, the, the the, way you then it aligns with my title, you know, as the Sarikindawa Kinupe, the literal meaning is the king of horses. Okay, uh, 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 the Honorable Minister, uh, the way you are saying it, <laughs> the way you are saying <laughs> it, sir, it's, it's <laughs> so simple mm. to have uh, numbers of horses yes. in America. Yeah. But what are the challenges that you are facing in holding onto all these horses? You know, uh, everything in life comes with a challenge. Yeah. But what, what uh, we keep riding on, or what I keep riding on, is uh, the commitment, you know, to make the industry better. Yeah. You cannot be talking of the two at the same time. You have to just overlook the challenges and take on the commitments. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, we, we still need to talk. We still need to talk. I know the, the time is far. Yes, yes. We still need to talk about this number of horses that you, that, that you have in your yes, custody. Yes. And when you look at the food yes. that, they, that, they, that, they, that they are eating yes. daily, yes. I know it costs you a lot. Yes. But uh, not ask that question. Yes. What are the investments yes. that goes into this? Yes. What are you getting out yes. of it? Uh, really, for now, uh, we are not making much from it. But uh, it's actually a long-term investment. Uh, like I said, the kind of uh, actually the the gain is in the breeding. Now you have to continue with the breeding, and you also have to maintain a momentum in the racing. So when you breed, the racing is on. People are beginning to get more awareness in the racing. And then what you breed, what comes out, you know, from your breeding farm is automatically assi assimilated, you know, by people in the industry. Okay, let me take you back to the start of this conversation where you were trying to do a comparison with mm. football. Yes. Um, you were playing a very significant role yeah. in pushing horse racing in yeah, Nigeria sure. and a very big one at that. Yeah. And if we want to look at how football has evolved over time, yes. um, media advertisers you yeah. know put in so much for yeah. coverage and yeah. all of that if yeah. that i'm talking about support now for yeah. what's reason yeah. what would be your recommendations in terms of promotional rights sponsorship yeah. you know to make this um, act sporting activity thrive yeah well it is it is very very important that is very fundamental you know where we're actually creating a lot of awareness by showcasing you know, the quality of our horses and the number of races we're doing, you know, in, the, in, in Nigeria. And then uh, I must tell you in a couple of derbies that we have had, racing tournaments, you know, we have gotten a lot of support from MTN, from Glow and other multinationals, but that is really not enough. Yes. It's like a tip in an iceberg. We're still looking forward, you know, appealing, you know, to multinationals, you know, to follow up on our activities in, in, in order to give more support, you know, uh, to horse racing activities in Nigeria. Uh, let me briefly talk about my constituency yes. now, uh, because sports is a media event. Yes. Yeah. How much have you been carrying the media yes. along? Yes. One, in understanding yes. this game and also in popularizing it in line with what you are doing? Uh, logically, you see, what we try to do is wherever we are having, you know, this event, uh, the local media at the state level are actually, you know, being carried along. They are, they, they are part of, you know, the formation of the uh, competition till the finish. Because in most cases, you will see uh, the royals and the states will be involved the uh, the state governors will be involved because usually the star race which is the highest race used to be the governor's cup okay so yes. we're rounding off now yeah. um very briefly yes, i know hoss hoss business is more like a passion for you you write Certainly. it to your horseman yeah, sure. um, what is your vision yeah. if you look at horse racing in nigeria if mm. we're looking at revolutionizing it yeah, sure. what is your vision what is the picture you see uh, the the picture that we see in revolutionizing uh, the horse racing activities in Nigeria is, uh, uh, as you know, 
the event of polo mm. you know which are both used you know uh, with horses just like the horse racing uh, we want to see in the near future you know uh, the horse racing activity you know becomes as available as polo activities you know in the country and then uh, our vision too is to see you know that uh, we continue you know with this breeding you know where we have star horses that are being produced in Nigeria you know and also uh, we also strongly want to uh, see how we save Nigeria and Nigerians, you know, from uh, investing in other people, taking Nigerian money out to buy, you know, horses, you know, in, in huge amount. A lot of forex is being expended in that. So we want to close that gap. We want to make sure those monies remain in Nigeria. And the Niger breed, I'm sure, are the resilient ones we're looking forward to. Sure, certainly. Thank you certainly. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you Rich. very much, um, Abu so Bakr Mustafa, the second Dawaki of Nupi. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for your Rich. time. Thank you very and much. And we wish you the very best. Continue to keep the vision, the passion, Thank you know, you. alive. Thank you so well much, done. Ruth. I'm grateful. All right. Our Thank panelist, you. Mr. Kayode Adini, former chairman, Sports Writers Association of Nigeria, FCT chapter, mm -hmm. and also an assistant director of news here in NTA. Thank you Thank for you. joining um, us. I'll be sure that next time you are going to see me. Yes, probably when we're talking another sport. He might probably be on the horse. <laughs> Okay. No, no, but, uh, he's going to own a horse before. Uh, he's going to ride a horse yeah, right so, before So me. what you need to do now <laughs> is to start eating once in a day so you that know, so you, you will now like reduce me. your weight <laughs> and then you'll be like her. Yes. And then when, when, when we're thinking to recruit judges, you will be part of the people that we're recruiting. Okay, I didn't even ask if we have female jokies. Do, do we have female jokies? Uh, well, you can I be the, be the first, first one. Yes. I'm <laughs> breaking boundaries. Yes, okay, so we've sure, been talking sure, sure, sure. Um, revolutionizing horse racing yeah. in Nigeria. So sports is one um, you know, tool for promoting unity anywhere in the world. So let's look at this other direction, talking about horse racing. There's so much we can hear from that angle. I'm Ruth Aguele, and this is Platform. Bye.